two other things we have to show you. One other thing. This is big. We don't suggest you get this book because it's a lot of good information, but there's some bad information in it too. Because it's the book of a dictionary of angels, including fallen angels. Okay, we went into this book for study purposes only. We don't, think, we don't suggest people get this book because it's a lot of stuff in here that, 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 that's just out of this world. But we're going in here to show you that the people that are on the left hand side is calling on the name the Hebrews have, took, have taken as their God. Okay? I'm going to get Jehovah out of this book. Jehovah, which is synonymous with Jehovah or Yahweh. What did that say right here, brother? You just read it right here. Jehovah. One of the many names of Metatron. One of the many names of Metatron. What? Jehovah, which is the same as the Tetragrammaton. One of the many names of Metatron. Right? So you might ask, Metatron, that don't mean anything to me. Who's Metatron? Let's go into this book and find Metatron. What did this say, brother? Metatron. El Shaddai. Metatron is El Shaddai. So we need to stay away from that name too. Read. Reproduce from Mavis, the greater key of Solomon. The greater key of Solomon. Because we know Solomon went off and started dealing with the same wicked gods. Who's Metatron? Here he is, brothers and sisters. Here's your Yahovah. That's Yehovah, or Yahweh. All right. Now, you would think that if the Most High's name was dreadful among the heathen, why are the heathens using this name as the prominent or one of the highest gods in their worship? Let's get the information out of that real quick before we get back into the scriptures. What you got in there? Before we show the witches got. Where you at? This is page 54, Codex, Codex Magic. Okay, show, show the book we're going into. Codex Magic. What is Codex Magic? Codex Magica is by Tex Mars, which was a Christian, who sought fit to look, he looked into the governments and the, uh, uh, the entertainment societies, along with the, 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 the high politicians, and noticed that they, and seen that they all had one thing in common, that they followed the same God, okay, that they would throw up the bath for men, that these people these influential people in the earth receive their power through Satan. Okay? Let's read what you have on page 54 when it comes to the lost name of God. Read it. The lost name of God. The blue large nations. Now we know that the name of the Most High is not lost. The Most High told Israel, I am that I am. Tell them I hire since you want, since you did. So it seemed like these guys lost the Most High's name on purpose to bring forth their own God. Read. The blue large nations, in compassion the first three degrees of masonry, are instructed that, that they are seeking the lost word or the lost name of God. So in masonry, they trick people into masonry at low degrees, telling them that, you know, if you stay in, we're going to give you the true name of God. Read. It isn't until they reach the level of royal arch masonry, seventh degree. So once they get to the seventh degree, which is the York Rite, read on. 
that they discover the lost name of God. At that time, they quote unquote get the lost name of God. But what God? We read in Psalms, there's many gods. Read. They discovered that the lost name of God wasn't lost after all. It's at this level that they learned the sacred name of Masonry's God. They find that the sacred name of the Masonic God is composed of three names. They find out that the, that the, that the name of their God, the Mason's God, composes, compiles from three separate names. What's that? Representing the three identities of God. What's that? It is so sacred that the three royal arts masons are able to speak, are able to speak it. Skip over that. Go right to it. What are the three names? The name Javelin has three syllables. So the name Javelin had three syllables. That's the name you get once you pass the seventh degree in masonry. Read. Representing a composite god made up of three subordinate deities. The Masonic material identifies as three, the three as Yah or yes. Yahweh. Hold up. One of the three is what? Yah or Yahweh. Hold that paper for me. Grab that. Yah or Yahweh. It's one of the three deities you get once you get past the seventh level of masonry. And they put all three of these gods together. You got that? Read that last part again. The name Javavah has three syllables, representing a composite made up of three subordinate deities. So yeah. The Masonic material identifies the three as Yah or Yahweh, Baal and Osiris. Baal and Osiris. Now don't forget, we read earlier that it came a point where Baal and Yahweh became interchangeable. Read. Logically, the name should be spelled Yahweh by the Duncan's Masonic ritual and monitor admits that over the years the spelling has been corrupted by Freemasonry until it reached its current form. Decker correctly, correctly asserts that what these men are doing is worshiping a demon. They're worshiping a what? Worshiping a demon They're god. They're worshiping a demon god. See, that's one of the reasons people can't let that name go. That demon have power over people, man. It's sorcery. Especially if you have the star Moloch in there. The star, the star Moloch, which is a six-pointed star, that's a vortex for spirits. So that's why these people can't let the name or these symbols go. They're under a spell. Read on. So far removed from the real God that the, that the worship must surely defy the holiness of God and guarantee those who pronounce that name in such a ceremony a swift ride to hell. So if you do that name in their ceremonies they, that they actually do, in these Masonic rites, it gives you almost a guarantee, a swift ride to hell. Now in the book, we skipped over the chant because we're not into that, okay? We just follow the most High. But at the end of their chant that they do to their God, the, the name at the end of the chant is Jehovah, right there with my finger. You see that? The name at the end of the chant is Jehovah, which is synonymous to the Tetragrammaton YHWH. Okay. Now let's, I, I want to make this clear before we continue. Okay. At one point, when I first got it, that I was a Hebrew Israelite, I was under a group or some teachers that taught us that Yahweh or Yahweh was the name of the Most High. All right. Of course, I called on it. You know, I found out that we are the chosen people. I found out that, you know, we're the people of the book. All this information they had, there was no way for me to know that they would lie to me about the name of the Most High. So in respect to my teachers, the same teachers that gave me certain information, I respected them enough to say, okay, if that's the name of God, I don't know Hebrew, I'll say it. But that was in my, in, in my ignorance. Okay, I didn't research where my teachers got that name from. I, I didn't do it. 
I did not research it at all. I just received it because it was more than I was getting in the Christian church. But when you come down to it, it's all the same gods. You, call, you, go, you go out of the Christian church to call on a higher deity on the left-hand side. Okay, Satan vices, man, his devices are manifold. You would jump out of the pot into the frying pan. So, I wasn't exempt. At one point, I called on those names until the Most High started revealing understanding through baptism, praying, coming to the Most High, and eventually he revealed the information. Okay? And it was up to us to stand with what we knew was right. And to eventually give it to the people before the deliverance. I wanted to say that. Now let's get back into it. Also in the book Codex Magica, we ran into another book. Get it, get it out of there for me if you don't mind. I think it's right here, right? We ran into a book in Codex Magica, which was which is called The Witch's Guide. Okay? In this book, it shows us who is the highest God worshipped in witchcraft. It so happened that, that while a brother was here in Philadelphia, a brother from Baltimore, he went downtown because he noticed this book was in Codex Magica and he seen this book for almost pennies in a stack of books. He found it by mistake. He recognized it because it was a book that was highlighted or promoted in Codex Magica. So in this book, it gives us the name of the witch's god. You, would, you wouldn't take a wild guess and figure out what name the witches are worshipping. Take a guess. What's the page number on that? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. I need you to read Yahweh here for me. What does it say on the Yahweh, which is the tetragrammaton? And what is Yahweh doing in the witch's God? Read that for me here. Muhammad regarded. Yahweh. Muhammad regarded the Jewish and Christian God as being Allah's will. As being what? As being, excuse me, Muhammad regarded the Jewish and Christian God as being Allah. As being Allah. So, Yahweh and Allah is interchangeable. They're the same deities. That's the reason the Jewish people in the Arab are fighting for the same territory and worshiping at the same wall. Okay? They're dealing with the same God. Because Satan had set up his temple over in Israel. When our temple was sacked in 70 AD, that's where Satan had been ruling from. Okay? So whoever controlled that area gets direct access to the fallen. It says right here that it's interchangeable. Yahweh. Yahweh, Muhammad, regarded the Jewish Christian God as being Allah. See that? Now this book, like this is the book for witches. Brothers and sisters, you have to wake up. The most I gave.